All right, today we're gonna to talk about the Go X1 node setup. So I'm gonna throw the link in the chat here, check the link down in the description, and let's get started. So we have our Contabo VPS here, and we also have our Go X1 GitHub. So when we come over to the GitHub, we're just gonna start right on the uh, the top, running the full node testnet. So we're just gonna run through these commands real quick. So first we're gonna run the apt update. This will update uh, the, the packages that you have installed on your computer. It's gonna make sure you have the latest versions of things like Python and you know, all the things that are installed. Um, then we're gonna install the prerequisites with this next command. So apt install dash y golang w get git and make. Each one of these is a different Linux program. So we have the go language program. We have the w git program, which is allow allows you to download files from the internet. We have the git, which allows you to grab things from GitHub and then make, which allows you to compile uh, programs. So we're gonna go ahead and run the apt install golang w git make. What's up, Tad Abe? I'll buy you a coffee maker when Zen thousands X. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. So we went ahead and we ran the apt install. This was really quick for me because I had everything already installed. So it just runs through the install and tells me it's all good. So now that we have Linux updated, we have our prerequisites installed, include golang, wget, git, and make. Now we can start running these programs that we installed. So the first command is git clone branch x1, and then the URL of the GitHub that I put in the chat. This command will copy the entire GitHub directly to a folder called go x1. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and paste it in here. And it's gonna use that new Git program that we installed and now it's downloading it from the internet. So boom, 100%, resolved all the objects, downloaded at 20 megs a second, we're good. So now we type cd go x1 to go into the program folder. Now you can see the prompt changed. It says forward slash go x1. That tells us that we're in the go x1 folder. Now the next step, is where I always have the issues. So we're gonna to try to get this to work the first try. We're gonna run make x1. And if it doesn't work, we'll troubleshoot it. If it does work, I'll show you the troubleshooting steps that I have to go through anyway. So we're, okay, so <laughs> there we go. So cannot load malformed module path embed missing dot and first path element make make file x1 error. So Obviously I'm having some kind of error here. Typically this error, this error one happens when uh, you have the wrong version installed. So I love to use chat GPT when I'm, when I'm playing around with this stuff. We'll go ahead and go into chat GPT and we're gonna type in, what is the Linux command to check the version of Golang? And the reason why I wanna check the version of Golang is because the X1 node requires at least 1.2. And for some reason, by default, it wants to install 1.13. So if I hit go version, you can see I have go version go 1.13.8. So that's not gonna work. That's a problem. We need this to be up to, I think the latest version of go is 1.25 and we have 1.13. So we're really far behind. It's not good to be behind in your updates. You wanna make sure that you have the latest updates. So I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, I'm gonna say, what are the commands to download and install Golang 1.2? Just to pause, just to see where we're at right now. So we downloaded the, the files from the GitHub, we ran the make command, and we received this error. We're receiving this error because I ran the version, the go version command, and it's telling us we're at 1.13, but we need to be at 1.2. So now, I'm asking ChatGPT, the latest version of Golang is 1.2, what are the commands? So it says, you can download the Go 1.2 archive from the Go page, extract the archive. So first we have to find the version of Go. So I might use Google for this one. I'm gonna say, uh, download command for latest version of Go on Ubuntu. And it should hit me up how to install Go and it's gonna be a wget command. So this one's using curl. 
but this is only 1.16. I think we can just use the same URL though. So let's try this. So I'm gonna copy this URL. And this is what I mean by this part is always the hardest for me. I can never seem to find the right command. So if I pop this in here, I'm gonna type go 1.2. This might work, this might not. What is the latest version of Golang? So the latest. So it's 1.21.5. So if I type in 1.21.5 and leave everything else the same, this should work. So if I come back here, I'm gonna type this curl command, curl dash ol, and then the URL of the Golang dot org update path and boom it's downloading the file it downloaded a 67 megabyte tarball and now we can actually run this sudo command to extract the tarball so we're going to go sudo tar c user local xzf go 1.2 point what was it to 1.5 dot linux dash amd 64 dash tar dot gz so all this command does this is similar to extracting a zip file so we're using the tarball command to extract extract the tar dot gz file and this basically uh oh so it didn't find the file so let's try again oh i i left it i put an extra period in there so you see it's go 1.21.5 Linux AMD, go 1.2. Okay, so let's try it again. It should extract the file now. Boom. So that extracted the file, puts it in the user local file, and now we have to tell the system to use that file. So we can edit the following path in our bash RC file. So. We're familiar with the nano command when we have to update our miner. We're gonna update our bash RC file this time to use this new version of Go. So I'm gonna type in nano squiggly forward slash dot bash RC. Let's spell it right. And boom. So now we're in this bash RC file. I'm gonna just scroll all the way to the bottom. And now I'm gonna paste this export path user local go bin, because that's where we installed our Go version. So this is telling us that the path to the version of Go we just installed is on this path. So now we're gonna save this file, we're gonna exit, and now we can verify our installation by typing in Go version. And it's still the old version. <laughs> and this is where I was, <laughs> ah. <laughs> I followed the commands, but it's still listing the old version. So now we gotta ask ChatGPT why if we extracted the file and updated the bash RC. Oh, I have to reload the bash RC. That's the one thing. I forgot this line right here. So after adding this line, run source squiggly bash rc so i forgot this that's why it didn't work what this does is it refreshes your system variables and reloads the files so by running this source it's going to reload that bash rc file we just edited and now we still have the old version <laughs> motherfucker so we might have multiple installations so we're going to follow this which go Ah, so it's user bin go. So pop that in here, see what this says. Indicates the go binary is being used located in the user bin, which is different from the standard installation. This is likely why you're still seeing the old version. To resolve this, you need to adjust your path environment variable so the shell finds the new go binary. So let's go and try it again. So we got to open our nano bash RC 
And let's see if this path is different than what we just added. So we got export path. Ah, yeah, it is. So we'll remove this. And that's user local go bin colon path. So that is a little different than what it gave us the first time. So we're going to go ahead and save this, overwrite it, wrote 105 lines, and then we have to apply the change. So we run our source command again. That works successfully. And now if we type go version, we're at 1.21.5. Woohoo! That worked. All right. So now we're at the correct go version. That is by far the hardest part of getting this thing to work, getting your node up to 1.21.5. Now that we have the Golang version 1.21.5 installed. I'll run the make x1. And we still got the same error. We also have to update the go mod. Updates to go mod are needed. To update it, run go mod tidy. So this is a command that will actually read the path and it'll kind of download the prerequisites, clean up the installation files, and just tidy up the installation. It'll find what's missing and add it, download it, fix it. So we'll type in go mod tidy. But now let's try go make x1. So we typed make x1 and it's thinking pretty hard here. I believe it's building the x1. So first we use wget and I used curl, but wget you can also use to download files. We used git to get the GitHub. And now we just use make to compile. So now it's compiling the actual node software. So once we make the X1 file, then we can run the CP build. It'll tell it to use that go, and then we can run the node. So we just finished the running the make, make command, and now we can run the CP build X1, and it'll build the, build the node. Okay, so now we're ready to run it. And there's a, there's a, a few different ways to run it. The reason why I like to use the VPS, the Contabo VPS, that's not on my local computer, and it's not on my local network, you can run the RPC server, and I don't want it like connecting to my house. So, and then there's the full, full version where you're running an RPC that's open to the world. You should only run this one if you know what you're doing. Don't run it on your local machine. Run it on a cloud server that doesn't have data that you're not worried about losing because there's always the chance you'll get hacked. So let's pop it in here. We'll go ahead and enter this command. So we got the x1 dash testnet dash HTTP. We're allowing the ports. We got the IP address. And now that we've cleared up our disk space issue, this should run. And now we see it talking. We're talking to other nodes. We see, see new blocks coming in so fast. New DAG summary, new LLR summary. I'm not sure what an LLR summary is. So Craig Crypto says, you like Contabo better than Vast. So Contabo isn't a GPU miner. So th this is just, these are more of a private server. So this is basically, if you wanted to do a CPU miner, this is what we were doing CPU mining on. Um, however, these are much, much cheaper than a GPU. So these aren't, aren't rented by the hour, they're rented by the month. So you can get this little cheap, cloud VPS for $5 a month. It has four CPU cores, six gigs of RAM, 100 gig NVMe st data storage. And that's about as cheap as you can get for a private server. So this cloud server is out on the internet. I don't have control of it. It's in the, in, it's in the Contabo cloud, but it's extremely cheap and I can do things like run a full node where I don't have to worry about compromising the security of my home network. I just have it sitting on the cloud with a bunch of stupid data that I don't care if anyone sees, but I'm letting the node run to, to keep the network strong. All right, so now that we tested the node and we saw the node was running, I like to run the node in Tmux, which is the terminal multiplexer, and this allows you to rejoin this, this session later. So if you run it directly in your console, once you close your console, you disconnect, it's gonna stop the node. If you want to run it in Tmux, it'll actually keep it running in that terminal multiplexer, even if you disconnect, even if you close your console session. And then later you can rejoin the Tmux session. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. So we just exited our node. Now we're back at our command line. 
To start a TMUX session, all you have to do is type in TMUX or TMUX. Now we're inside of the TMUX session. Um, you can see that because of the, the green bar across the bottom, and we can actually use our control B commands. So we have a couple of different ways to split it. If we hit control B percentage, we split it vert vertically. If we hit control B quote, we split it horizontally. And then we can use control B up and down to switch between the two, two windows. One way you might want to split your windows with Tmux is to have the node running on the top. So now I have my window split with HTOP on the bottom monitoring system resources. So then I can see if I'm running low on RAM or disk space or memory or CPU while the node is running in the top pane. And then I can hit control B D and it takes me back to the main window. And then from here I can quit. I can exit out of my SSH session, close my SSL window and go back to my desktop. And now say I go to another computer, I go to work for the day, I come home, I wanna check on my node. Now I'll go back into my command prompt. I'll open WSL. I'll run the SSH command to connect. I'll type in my password. And all I have to do is type in tmux attach. And it brings me right back to the session that I left running earlier that day. So that's pretty much how you run through the node setup. The hardest part, as you observed, is definitely getting the correct version of Go. By default, it wants to install 1.13, but you need 1.2 at least. So I covered the steps on how to upgrade your version of Go from 1.13 to 1.2. And then we executed the node, we created the node file with the make command, and then we ran it in our tmux session. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, as always. Thank you for watching Tree City 